In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We're looking today at Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Lodge out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking, so that they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the, son of, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. And glory be to God forever. Amen. In today's passage, we see a bit of the journey, of the spiritual journey of every human being. It starts off by hearing the word. Jesus is standing in a boat and he's preaching the word of God. And the people have pressed around him to hear the word of God. And they hear it and they receive it. And then, and, it, and it's kind of a bit of the imagery that you see in the Old Testament where they received the law and, and they heard the law. And then, and then they were asked to perform the law. Jesus comes out of the boat and turns to Simon and says to him when he was done speaking, cast, you know, cast your nets, go out, launch into the deep and cast your nets. And his answer, you know, St. Peter's answer is beautiful. He says, you know, we've labored all night. And that this image of laboring all night, I don't know about you, but I've seen and I've felt that where we've, we as humans have labored and toiled and trying to be good, and failed. Labored all night, it just sounds like someone who's just tired of their sins and tired of someone who's tried so hard on their own but has not been successful at overcoming sin, has labored and toiled in self-righteousness and, and, and failed. And this very much sums up the experience of, uh, of the Old Testament, but also sums up the experience of those who try to, you know, uh, become good people without God. But but St. Peter, the difference is that he steps into an area of faith. He goes into a place where he says, listen, I've done this all night and, and, and I've labored and toiled and I'm tired and I've been cleaning my nets all morning, but at your word, I'm going to trust you. And here the word trust really means faith. And we know that the, the main difference is that that in a relationship with God, the only way we can enter into holiness, the only way we can enter into union with God is by faith. It is by trusting Him. When we hear His word, not just to know it and to try to do it on our own, but really to recognize that we must live and walk by faith and to trust Him, to trust Him. When He says, launch into the deep, to say, okay, I've tried, but because you, you now are telling me to do it, I will do it and I will obey. And, and St. Peter obeyed. And out of the water came so much fish. It's this imagery this, you know, uh, of, of the grace that comes from baptism, the, the, the overflowing grace, the overflowing joy, this abundance that is so much that a second boat is invited and, and, and both boats are sinking because of the greatness of, of this catch and this is this is the life of grace you, you know we've struggled and struggled and labored all night against certain sins but when we approach the Lord and he tells us to go into the deep and we obey and trust trust that he wants to heal us trust that he wants to transform us then the joy and and the the gifts of grace that abound 
out of the waters of baptism and out of the waters of, of repentance and tears are great. So much so that St. Peter is faced with the glory of God. He comes and he worships the Lord. And, and when he worships the Lord, he goes on his knees and, and, and it says he goes to the knees, Jesus' knees, and says, Depart from me, for I am an evil man. What made him realize that he was an evil man? It was the incredible, unconditional love of God. It was the love of Christ who told him, Hey, can I use your boat to preach? Hey, why don't you go into and launch into the deep and you'll catch more fish? It was the, the expression of God's love that brought St. Peter to his knees to confess his unworthiness, to confess his sinfulness. You know, that, that is what happens when we are encountered with God's beauty. We have uh, an encounter of his love for us when we don't deserve it. It's, we come to a place of true humility come to a place where we recognize our incredible need for him and we worship him and we call out for mercy and we say, Lord, be merciful to us. And, and, and the Lord's answer is so beautiful. He says, you know, you're impressed with the fish, hey? You like the fish trick kind of thing? He says, but, but let me tell you, don't be afraid because now I'm going to make you catch men. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. You're going to you know, if you think this is great, just just imagine. You can't even imagine what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. And really, if Peter could have, you know, taken a look at, at, at uh, the future and seen what was coming his way, that he'd be casting out demons, healing the sick with his shadow and some handkerchiefs, and, and, and uh, ultimately going to his death uh, and martyred uh, on a cross upside down for the sake of his... Lord, he would have never imagined. And I think that the Lord uh, uh, approaches us and comes to us and sees in us something far greater than we can ever imagine. But what we do is we stay on the shore. He tells us, go into the, tea, into the deep. He says, go into the deep. Trust me. Trust me. I don't want you to approach me in a superficial way. I don't want you to do the bare minimum, you know. Uh, what time does the gospel start? Because I, I want to make sure I can have communion. And we just scrape by. Does the, does the sermon count as the gospel? He, he really doesn't want us to live in a surface kind of shallow way. He tells us, go into the deep. Throw yourself. You've labored on your own. Now, now come to me. And, and, and throw yourself into the sea, the ocean, and the depth of my love for you. Trust me. Trust me. And, and when he tells us that, he has these amazing plans. But, but typically our response is we stay on the shore and we mend our nets. We never have that experience of being transformed into new people with new purpose, with new vision, with new mission. And, and so that here we are standing on the shore, being invited to go into the deep. And it's up to us to respond uh, with faith and trust or to respond with fear. St. Peter worships and, uh, only when he's, he's gone into the deep. His experience and his awareness of who God is came after he went into the deep and trusted. And so we too must completely, with reckless abandon and love for God, jump into the deep and trust what he has for us. And, and it's beautiful because think about it. They just caught all this fish. I mean, from a business perspective, they just made it big. You know, here they are. They had all finally a catch that could probably keep them going for months without having to labor. And... Their eyes are open to who Jesus really is. And it says something beautiful. It says, so when they had brought their, boat, their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. You know, many people stop even, they, they go into the deep. Their lives are what we call, you know, blessed. They taste some success in some form. And then that's where it ends. Oh, God has blessed me. Well, Peter and, and, and John and James could have said, Hey, God has blessed us with this fish for our families. I'm sure this must be the purpose. But they saw beyond the fish. They saw beyond the material 
success and wealth. And what they did was the only real response to God, which is to forsake all and to follow. To forsake all and to follow comes from having an experience of going into the depth of God's love. So today, He is calling you and me to enter into the deep, to cast our nets, to trust Him even though we've labored and toiled, to benefit from the grace of that comes from the water, uh, uh, to enjoy the gift of the Holy Spirit, and to forsake all that we have and all that we are, our opinions, our thoughts, and to forsake the world in order to pursue his kingdom and for us to become fisher of men. Um, may you have a beautiful day in the deep and may you drown in the, the depth of his love. May you trust him in all that he's calling you to do. Have a beautiful day.